I always thought that, you know, being that guy carrying around the camera would be sort of weird, but people were like, actually, that's pretty cool. Like, I'm interested. I'm, I'm, what is he doing? You know, like all this stuff. And for me, this, as soon as I hit upload, this was a really valuable shift in terms of me claiming a new identity for myself, of me claiming that I was a content creator instead of a content consumer. My name is Michael Arzabal, and this is your first video, the series where creators just like me and just like you share the story of their struggles, triumphs, and lessons learned along the way of posting their first video. So hopefully that you can post your first video or take your next creative step. Eric Wynn is a young adult who stepped away from the pre-med path to follow and create his own path. And so today he's actually a full-time video freelancer and YouTuber. Eric's channel is all about his growth, his journey, and also just packaging up some mindset munchies for young adults and creators. He also has a new and evolving podcast all about navigating those gray areas of choices and life. I have listened to it. It is awesome. You should check it out. Before we jump into his awesome story, I just want to let you know where you can find Eric. Uh, probably the easiest place to find him is if you search for Eric Wynn on YouTube. You should pull him up. I'm going to have his link in the description below as well. So as you can tell, Eric is doing some amazing things and you know, has accomplished a lot already. But before any of that happened, he was just another creator on the sidelines. Here's Eric. Hey everyone, it's Eric Wen, and this is the story of my process posting my first vlog. So I've loved making videos for a long time and I've consumed a lot of YouTube basically since the platform started. I used to make stop motion videos when uh, YouTube first started when I was really little. That was my like taste, my tiptoeing into YouTube and I just realized like, whoa, this is a really cool place. This is a really cool community. I've always loved YouTube, but I always had a disconnect with that could be me. I always sort of felt like, hmm, I'm too shy or awkward in front of the camera. I'm a behind the camera guy. I'm not skilled or established enough to be, you know, giving tutorials. I'm not charismatic or loud enough or fun enough or my life isn't interesting enough for vlogging. But uh, in the beginning of this year, I decided, hey, my town's pretty cool. I really like biking around. I like hanging out with friends. What would it look like if I did do a vlog of my life? And so I carried my GoPro around, sort of tested it out, saw the process, and like, I was like, oh no, this is like super fun. Um, and I started to get a glimpse of like, hmm, maybe I do have something to say. But then still, no, 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 no. Uh, like, who was gonna watch? What was the point? But then I started listening to more Gary Vee and realizing that content creation is really important and sharing your voice and finding your voice and finding an audience is really valuable. And I chatted with Audrey Ember, who briefly attended my college, and I like had a conversation. And over the course of the conversation, she quickly cut through all my BS and excuses and was like, no, 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 no. The most original part of your content is you, and there's a value in showing your process, and it doesn't have to be perfect. And she really reminded me that YouTube was all about being yourself and that there is space for you to be yourself and that what people loved about YouTube was you being yourself. And so that made me realize like, hey, all these excuses I have are more a reflection of me not being okay with myself or not being fully comfortable or confident in myself, not that YouTube was actually like this thing I couldn't reach or couldn't attain or that wasn't uh, not accepting of me. So then I was like, okay, I have no excuses. I've got to do it. So mentally I was like, okay, I have to do this and I really don't want to be a YouTuber who's like, I'm going to post every single week and then like two weeks and gives up. So I was like, okay, if I'm going to make this commitment, I need to think about it. The funny thing for me is that like, as soon as I made that commitment, because I had been thinking about it, reflecting on it, and I knew why I wanted to do it. And I knew that I had no excuses. I, as soon as I picked up that camera to make the first video, everything fell into place. It was actually like really exciting and fun for me to make that first video. I was so excited. I was ready to make the next one and I just hit upload and was already thinking of the next video that I was gonna make. What was surprising to me was how positive and accepting and interested people were in the vlog. I always thought that, you know, being that guy carrying around the camera would be sort of weird, but people were like, actually, that's pretty cool. Like, I'm interested, I'm, I'm, what is he doing? You know, like all this stuff. And for me, this, as soon as I hit upload, this was a really valuable shift in terms of me claiming a new identity for myself of me claiming that I was a content creator instead of a content consumer. I could actually say that and have evidence to back it up. There was trajectory, there was, I was making myself a part of something, I was heading towards something, I was claiming a new thing for myself, which was so 
empowering and rewarding and uh, just like, like the coolest thing ever. I, I originally thought I'd just be making sort of lifestyle videos for a small group of friends and that it would, you know, just be maybe sharing some tips about videos and editing and I really had no idea. But after I started churning out content after about, I think, six to eight weeks, what really revealed itself was my strengths and my heart for encouraging young adults and creators and listening to them, sharing some perspective or mindset stuff so that they could get out of a funk. It's funny because I've always loved mulling over things to find a solution and find perspective, but I never really realized that that was a strength. I've always loved one-on-one -on -one conversations where I get to listen to other people and then like sort of give them some perspective or encourage them, but I never really realized that that was a strength. For my classes and speeches and group projects, I've always loved sort of taking the time to prep something to pack a punch or make someone think about something or tell a story and doing it in a sort of natural, authentic, you know, just sort of normal guy way. But I never really realized that that was a strength. Making these videos really showed me a bunch of my strengths that I had no idea about. It showed me an audience that I had no idea about, that there was a lot more I had to say than I realized. I really hope that this story can reach someone who needs to hear it uh, and that it can empower you to get out of your comfort zone, to stop making excuses, to share more content, share more of you. Because there's people that need to see it, that people that can really be impacted positively by what you bring to the table. And you also, in the process, will learn so much more about yourself than you ever have thought. It's seriously, absolutely insane, and it's way more rewarding than you think. It doesn't need to be daily, it doesn't need to be perfect, it doesn't need to be viral. It just needs to be you, and it needs to be something you're committed to, and it needs to be something that you're passionate about, and you're creating something that you are excited about, and that you would watch. Like, you will be surprised some awesome stuff is going to happen. So, that's my story. Back to you, Michael. Thank you so much for having me. Eric. Man, thank you so much for your story. It's amazing and powerful, and I know just hearing it has already impacted some people's lives. All right, guys, I want to take a little bit of time just to process through Eric's story, get into some action steps that you guys can take to hopefully either post your first video or take your next creative step. I want to leave you with two completely actionable things that you can start working on right now. I think the key action step that Eric took that I think we can all take is that Eric got curious. He finally got to the place where he started getting curious enough that he took his GoPro and he ran around and he made some test vlogs. He asked himself, what would it look like if I made a vlog? And when he followed that curiosity and he just had fun with it and he just played with it, it encouraged him. One, it let him know Hey, I actually enjoy doing this thing. And then two, it started to give him confidence that he could do this thing, that when he tried to put something together that it was already starting to work out pretty good. Number two is to find some supportive friends. And trust me, I understand, especially for you introverts out there, that this one sounds really daunting. I get it, I get it, but just hear me out. It's great if these people can be in-person friends, but it doesn't even have to be. It can be people online. For Eric, he first even just had an online mentor, someone who doesn't know him, but he started just to listen to those positive things being said to him. So just like Eric found Gary Vee and was listening to him, maybe that'll work for you, and maybe you find someone else, at least to find some people that can speak into you. What I really love about Eric's story, and I think it's a big reason why these videos right here are sitting with you, is that what people speak to our lives matters. The voices that we allow to get into our head can really affect whether or not we do the things that we hope and dream to do, even if they're just strangers online. If you're someone out there and you're thinking about posting your first video, or maybe you've posted videos before, but you're, you're thinking about getting back into it, I encourage you now, take the first step when you take that step, you never know where that is going to take you. Thank you so much for watching your first video with Eric Wynn today. Check him out. Seriously, you, you really want to check him out. He's awesome. He makes amazing videos. Check out the podcast. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.